Okay, here we are at the uh, northbound on-ramp to the Hollywood Freeway at the intersection of Franklin and Argyle in Hollywood. And the reason I'm here is I want to talk about uh, congestion in Hollywood, how I think it's getting a lot worse and why I think it's getting worse. And to do that, I'd like to uh, walk a little bit about, uh, around a few blocks in the neighborhood here. So I'm going to make a right here and start walking down Argyle so you can see exactly what rush hour traffic looks like um, in Hollywood. Um, the reason I chose Argyle, uh, I think it makes my point really well. Um, Argyle, up until like even five years ago, was actually pretty quiet at rush hour. You could walk down Argyle around this time of night, which is, I think it's around 6.30, and uh, there really would be hardly any traffic. As you can see, it's not that way anymore. This is pretty common on Argyle. Traffic is actually blocked, backed up uh, a full city block here, and I think it's actually probably backed up even beyond Yucca. Um, I think a large part of that has to do with the uh, policies that the city of Los Angeles has been pursuing. Um, the amount of construction that's going on in the area. You can see there's a hotel uh, going up here on my right. There's another project. I'm sorry, hotel here on my left. Uh, there's another project uh, farther down to the right, and I'll talk about that as well. Traffic is finally moving. Um, but let's walk down to Yucca and take a look and see what it, li what it looks like at that intersection there. I'm actually, as we uh, get up to the intersection here, I'm going to cross over to that little traffic island, which means I'm going to take my eyes off the camera for a minute as I cross the street. I want to keep my eyes on the road so I don't get hit. So forgive me if the camera work gets even more shaky than it already is. Uh, sorry, this is definitely an amateur production. Something I do want to note, you can see uh, construction is going on here. Uh, there's uh, work going on at this intersection, but no lanes are blocked tonight. Actually, the, bl the lanes are wide open, so construction is not physically uh, blocking uh, the flow of traffic. But let's get up here to the intersection. You can see this truck here caught in the intersection, uh, not able to make it through. The light is turning green, could be a problem for cross traffic. And especially for these people on Yucca here, trying to make the left, uh, we'll see if they can get through, but let's take a look down Argyle, and I'm actually gonna zoom in here so you can take a look farther down Argyle. And as soon as this car gets out of the way, I think you'll be able to see that the traffic is backed up. Uh, sorry, the focus isn't great, but it looks like it's backed up right about down to Hollywood Boulevard. And let me see if I can zoom in farther. Yeah, you can see it's backed up, I think, down to Hollywood Boulevard, and there are cars lined up even south of Hollywood Boulevard. Um, also waiting to go north on Argyle. So I'm going to zoom out again so the camera work is less shaky. And I think that truck is still in the intersection. Wasn't able to quite get through there. I think it's the same truck. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, you can see this guy making the left is having a hard time. And you can see there were other cars uh, here on Yaka queued up waiting to make that turn that weren't able to make it through. Now, uh, Across the street here is the project I spoke of uh, just a minute ago. Uh, this is another high-rise project going in at the same intersection. Um, and again, the idea here is transit-oriented density. Um, the, the, city wants, the city claims that they're building high-density uh, projects near transit centers in order to get people out of cars. But again, if you look at the traffic backed up down Argyle, uh, these people, even though they're a block away from transit um, are not riding the red line and they're not riding any buses, they're not riding their bikes, and they're not walking. These people are all driving and again we see cars stuck in the intersection. Let's take a look down Yucca and see what traffic looks like there. You can see traffic is backed up on Yucca as well. I'm going to walk back this way. The sh machinery is going to obscure the view for a minute here. You can see the pack traffic is backed up on Yucca almost all the way to uh, Vine. In fact, it looks like as the cars queue up. Let me zoom in here so you can see that better. Traffic backed up, not quite to Vine there. It's starting to move. Let's walk farther down. Oops, 
gonna zoom out again so the camera work isn't quite so shaky. But you can see here again, um, traffic backed up almost a full city block if you can see over this car, not quite. Uh, people waiting, waiting to make the left turn onto Argyle so they can presumably get on the Hollywood freeway. Um, but let's walk over to Vine and see what the traffic looks like there. Um, I want to emphasize here that I, uh, I do not own a car myself. I uh, actually ride transit on a daily basis. So I would be someone who should be in favor of uh, anything the city can do to improve transit uh, in the LA area. But unfortunately, I don't think the city is really sincerely trying to do that. Or if they're sincere, they're badly mistaken because traffic has gotten much worse, not just in the Hollywood area, but in Los Angeles overall, in spite of the city's so-called transit-oriented density approach. And again, I'm not saying that transit-oriented density can't work, it's just the city of LA is not making it work. They're not pursuing policies that would actually encourage people to uh, ride transit. Uh, much of the housing that they're building near transit centers is actually for people who can afford a minimum of $2,000 a month in rent. That is not the demographic that actually rides transit. Um, by contrast, uh, there's been a wave of evictions uh, where people have been uh, to, uh, kicked out of their apartments under the Ellis Act, and these people living in rent-stabilized units are more probably the kind of people who would be willing to ride transit. However, if they have to leave their apartment near, say, the Red Line or uh, other transit uh, stops, it's going to make it much harder for them since uh, rents in the Hollywood area are going higher and higher and higher. So again here, you see traffic backed up almost to Vine here on uh, Yucca, and you can see cars lined up on Vine, waiting to get up to Franklin. You can see cars, oops, this van is here, but you can see actually, yeah, looking down. Let me zoom in here. You can see cars queued up south of Vine. Uh, this guy's waiting at the light, two guys waiting at the light. The light is green, they're not moving. This guy's stuck in the intersection. These cars still waiting. Let's see if they can make it through on this light. Oh, traffic is moving northbound on Vine, so maybe they will. I'm going to cross, I'm going to press the walk button here so I can get across. Oh, when I cross the street, we'll take another look down Vine and see uh, how far back uh, traffic goes. Um, but I don't know, you might, you know, looking at the traffic tonight here uh, in Hollywood, it seems like the result of the... Uh, city's policies is not so much uh, transit-oriented density as traffic-oriented density. Traffic just seems to uh, continually uh, get worse, congestion grows, and yet the city continues to insist that they're pursuing policies that are actually uh, uh, encouraging people to take transit. Okay, I'm going to cross the street again, so again, forgive me, I'm going to take my eyes off the camera. Okay, looking down Vine here, looks pretty nasty. Uh, traffic is backed up, not quite to Hollywood Boulevard, but there's a significant backup here. You can see this guy's trying to make the left turn to go northbound, probably won't make it through the intersection on the green. Yeah, he's left hanging out there. Okay, let's walk up on up Vine. basically a long line of red lights as people move northbound to Franklin. Many of them again trying to get onto the freeway in order to head back home, which is another aspect of uh, transit-oriented density that I have to question. The city claims by creating vibrant, walkable urban neighborhoods um, and putting people, having people live next to transit centers, they'll be encouraged to uh, actually live in the area they work and they won't need to drive so much, but uh, while I'm assuming a lot of these people work in the Hollywood area, it doesn't look like they're staying in the Hollywood area after uh, 5 or 6 p.m. Looks like they're going home somewhere else. And unfortunately, um, it does seem like most of these cars, I know it's hard to tell from the video, but most of these cars seem to have only one person in them. 
So we're not, uh, it's not like we're seeing carpooling or ride sharing or anything like that. As we get up here to Franklin, you will be able to see traffic is backed up on Franklin as well. You can hear that car horn honking and obviously somebody's very frustrated. You can hardly blame them. You can see cars uh, slowly moving through the intersection. Trying to make it through. Definitely pretty sluggish. Let's walk back here and take another look down Vine. I guess what I'd like to say here, uh, looking at the line of white lights stretching a uh, long ways down Vine is uh, the next time someone from the city of Los Angeles tells you they're creating transit-oriented density, ask them how come congestion keeps getting so much worse. <laughs> 